Okay, now I talk about my um, experiences and I'm always interested in the ideas that are implemented by our users from all over the world. So we would like to know which elements of Lia script are used, which um, patterns are implemented, um, probably which templates are newly implemented and which can be helpful for the um, further progress of my courses. And to solve this problem, of course, Lia script is a serverless implementation. We do not have an access to the usage and uh, usage implementation. We um, implemented a small aggregation pipeline for aggregating um, repositories and code that is available on GitHub. For this, I use the PyGitHub library for Python and the uh, GitHub API. If someone is interested in the code, of course, we, we can provide it. And I used um, some keywords related to Lia, referencing the URLs, referencing some specific combinations in the meter part and scanned for repositories and code files fulfilling these uh, patterns. After some merge and validation operations, we received a list of repositories that can be, um, that is now ready for the actual aggregation process. To improve the quality, we integrated a validity concept in this aggregation. This means we connected our keyword list with some assumptions about the validity of the corresponding repository or, or code fragment. This is, was important after some investigations due to the fact that false positives and false negatives um, find their way into our collection. And in the second phase of the aggregation, now we um, collected the repository parameters like initial commits, number of contributors, all these points that are available on the GitHub page for the repositories and for individual files, the content, language, keywords, etc. Based on it, we generated a small data set. Um, we evaluated in an analysis phase. Uh, we found 523 repositories and approximately 1,000 courses. 1,000 courses means individual files um, meeting the keywords of Lia script. And then we, um, based on the validation schema, we identified 229 repositories and 600 individual files as, as valid Lia script files. In the data set for this, um, materials are stored directly in our, um, in our repository. If you have an access to the Lia script um, symposium, then you find in, in HTML format, or we can provide other uh, databases um, containing the uh, information, and probably you find your own uh, your own course material in the list too. It's, it was really interesting to receive an overview about the different types of courses. Computer science is dominating, of course, but uh, there are some fancy uh, information, for instance, from uh, other discipline related uh, to uh, non-computer science, non-engineering topics. On the other hand, for the individual repository, we have an overview here and in repository per, per, from the repository perspective, it was interesting to um, analyze, analyze the duration, contributors, uh, forks, etc. And on the other hand, we have an overview about the uh, Lia script file, um, contents. And you recognize that our friends from Philadelphia are the most active Lia script authors in this field. Just follow the 
reference list here to get an overview about the implementation. Probably one interesting additional um, aspect for individual courses, we evaluated um, ChatGTP related to the first 2000 um, symbols in it, course materials, and try to estimate um, the topic. Sometimes it works very well. It was precise um, related to the manual checked um, ideas, data analysis, and so on. But sometimes it's, uh, some completely crazy um, outputs were generated by the chat tool. Animals and zoology are not um, in this document here. What are the results if we take a view to the um, data set? We have 10 internal, and internal means um, our students or um, other staff members of our working group and 71 external users. We made a list of authors producing the highest number of LIA documents. It's interesting that one of our colleagues uh, from a German, from another university, uh, provided a huge amount of documents, Agnesha or um, Arcus from Philadelphia. And the second um, or third level, uh, which languages are used. We have, have some colleagues from France using LIA script. Most of the documents are given in English, of course, um, but some other um, languages are uh, in this collection too. If you are interested in the idea of collaborative developed contents, this is interesting related to the question um, of Wikipedia or the concept of Wikipedia. Um, our colleague from Heilbronn implemented a large number of courses commonly with students, but we have a similar pattern for our, all other authors too. And probably the final question, what's the drive, the current drive of uh, LIA script development at the moment? I generated a short diagram illustrating um, the development from 2018 to 2023. Again, we split the courses according to internal and external editors, but in some it becomes obvious that we have an increasing momentum and we would like to use the event today to um, project this momentum on the year 2024. Thanks for your interest at the moment. I'm looking forward to questions to this first step in our agenda. I can ask a question. Of course. Hi, Britta. Hi, Sebastian. Thanks a lot for your impressive talk. Um, I Every now and then, or if I get a question um, regarding NeoScript or some restrictions regarding NeoScript, it's, it's usually data protection. So I saw um, you're using GitHub and you let your students um, have pull requests there and people can see who has contributed. Um, how do you, uh, is it institution in your institution, no problem? Um, do you have experiences how to handle these questions? We did discuss the question of privacy with our students. So we ask them or we describe the situation. They are completely free to use a nonsense fake account on GitHub. It's not important to have a name or a reference to their actual uh, location and so on. But some of the students um, uh, forced to use their actual um, name or 
on. In this way, due to the fact that they have already some projects and they would like to improve the, their visibility in this way. So at the end, it's up to the students. They are invited, but they, we are very happy this year to read some crazy names uh, mentioning um, some, some uh, and your non institution doesn't have a doesn't have a problem with that. Um, it's like, but, but because I know institutions are do have different kind of policies regarding privacy protection. Um, and every now and then I see this is a problem because they ask me, ah, well, it's passed somewhere, uh, some server that's outside our university. Um, so what about data protection and so on? Um, yeah, due to, of course, we have a policy in this way and we explain this situation to our student. But we, in the same way, we discuss um, the opportunities of being part in a community. And for computer science, this is a daily, uh, yeah, this, this is a normal pattern. It's kind of a common thing, yeah. Yes, it's a kind of common thing. You are right. And maybe all so, the other participants, if um, other participants have experiences in that regard also, maybe you can um, paste your um, experiences into the chat. I'd be happy to read about it. And this is probably something uh, I can add to. Sebastian did only <coughs> analyze the GitHub uh, repositories. They are probably outside other people who are using GitLab or other implementations of a Git server. And since it's not the only thing, uh, we've seen also some yeah private web hosting just for courses. So, but we are this is a, yeah we're not aware who is using it and how. We from time to time get an email with some questions, and we are excited and uh, in which uh, areas it's actually used or what people use to share the courses. Yeah, but, but this, is a, it, this is a problem and we should consider the activities and um, explain the situation for our students, of course. Yeah, and in the same way, um, a closed GitLab instance do not uh, meet the requirements of an open educational resource. If it's closed, of course, then we ensure the privacy issues and the policies of the university. But on the other hand, we do not provide an access for everyone who's interested in an implementation. Okay, so the first goal, the first goal of this symposium is reached. We improved the, or we initiated interaction between all authors. Very happy to see this. And please um, exchange your positions for these questions in the chat. I would like to invite you now to uh, follow up to the next um, level according to our agenda. We would like to get a new inputs by four different colleagues from um, different um, affiliations. Hermann Schranzhofer is a member of the FAIR Data Austria. So he's involved in the development of services and policies for Research Data Management, FAIR Data Austria meets, um, tries to establish the corresponding principles, findability, accessibility and interoperability as well as reusable in the handling of um, research data. And um, we are pretty proud to find out that 
he and his group decided to give LearScript a try for their um, courses. In this way, we are looking forward to hear your experiences. Okay, thank you, Sebastian. Thank you for the introduction. Hi to all of you. Uh, it's pretty cold uh, outside in Graz. We have snow about uh, half a meter or something like that. It's quite unusual for Graz. So I'm sitting in the home office just to avoid the trip to my office. And that's why you can see in the background my, uh, my rooms. That's all. But anyway, uh, just uh, jump into the topic. Uh, uh, Sebastian already told you about um, our project and I want to share my screen somewhere. And this is not... I don't have the button to share the screen today. I don't know why. Now you should be the presenter and a fourth button should appear on your desk. Ah, here it is. Okay, thank you very much. That's a good point. Uh, not this one, but this one. Okay. So I hope you can see it now. Yes. Yeah, I hope that's okay. Yeah. So uh, he, he already mentioned the Project Fair at Austria. Actually, it ended last at the end of last year. We are now in a follow-up uh, project called Shared RDM. But anyway, um, it's mainly the same consortium. Uh, it's a, a connection between different uh, different inst uh, institutions, mainly um, mainly uh, universities. And in the first project. Fiatate Austria was the lead was on our university, that's the Graz University of Technology. We had also the uh, University of Vienna, both of them, and Innsbruck, and also a uh, University of Medicine, and uh, uh, some of, uh, of arts, a new academy of arts uh, in the consortium, and they all worked on this idea, uh, research data management and FAIR data, that's the, the name and uh, the abbreviation FAIR, uh, Sebastian already um, explained, and this is what we are uh, now uh, uh, still are working on to show people in Austria, especially in, in uh, on universities, how they can make their data fair. And so we had also uh, to show you the yes the work packages, and there was a work package called uh, this was work package five here. Um, there was also uh, research data management training and support a topic. And within this idea of uh, research data management training, uh, we had the idea is uh, we want to set up some kind of um, good material to, to, to have uh, it online available for people just to make uh, uh, information about research data management and the FAIR principle uh, available. This was what, what we had as idea, and we worked on the, on the, um, on the content and on the main idea how to, to structure it. And there were three ideas how to transport the information. The first idea was having some text at the beginning. The second idea was having a video to just have a, a, a possibility to have only a, a short information about one topic. And the last one was having a, a short quiz uh, so that people can also interact with the with the uh, with the content, and uh, we worked out nine topics in within uh, fair or, or research data management, and then we started to implement it. And this is what they did on the web page of uh, Fair Office Austria or Fair, uh, fair Office Austria. And I want to switch to English for you. Uh, that's the English version. Yes, in research data management. And at the, at the bottom there we have the nine topics of these uh, of the, the research data man management uh, content. And if you go to one content, for example, publication of data, um, then you find the first uh, text on it. And you can have also a read more so that you have more, more text here. Then you get a short video, also a transcribe, that you can also read the spoken words there. 
And afterwards, there's a quiz where we can have some questions and also getting some answer if it's, it's correct or something like that at the end of, 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 of the quiz if we are through. And also, of course, further information and the citation. And after we did all this, I came to, to the guys and said, hey, okay, that's a fine idea, but that's not reusable for everyone because it's on a homepage, it's kind of structure, yes, but it's not really re reusable and uh, there's also no BUI that, there. So I want to have a publication on Zenodo, for example, with all these, uh, with all these contents. Then we, we uh, started to think on that. And actually, Brita is also here somewhere in, in our area, yeah, Brita, uh, was, I think, the first one she, she told me about Leah's Squid. And I also had some, some discussions with Andreas uh, Mühling, um, also from the uh, Dean Nestor group in, in Germany. And uh, then I had a, a first contact also with Andre and, and Sebastian about the topic. And we had an online course. Uh, it was actually a face-to-face -face course uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the side of Brita, but I was online there. And then I started uh, to try to convince uh, my partners in the consortium, hey, that's a good idea, because this is the, the possibility to get it really reusable, and you can put it on a on, on Zenodo, and you can get it on GitHub, and, and, and everything, and you can spread it really. Um, so I only I personally started with, with working on that, because the others uh, were not used to uh, work text-oriented. It's, it's a kind of, of, yeah, you have to like this a little bit. And, and I'm really fond of it because I don't want to drive with the mouse uh, several kilometers to have a nice homepage. And so I started uh, using a text editor. And, and yes, all of all, uh, that's the result. So what we have is, again, the nine uh, topics here with, uh, at the beginning, a short text, afterwards video, and with the transcribe and then we have at the end the, the quiz with the check if it's uh, if it's true or or not and that's what we did with all the nine topics and at the end we also published it on uh, Zenodo. Uh, it's there is an, an German version and an English version available and of course you have also the possibility to get on, on github uh, also the English and the German version again, and, uh, and have it have it also for reuse. The uh, whole thing is on CC BY, so you can use it, you can uh, transform it, you can add some uh, content, whatever you want. That's the, the main idea of reusable, I think, and that's now really a, a, a good thing to have it in a, in a format really with a possibility to use it on different platforms with different uh, possibilities and also to add some contents or to rearrange it, whatever you want. And I'm very happy to use uh, uh, script for that because it's really, really easy and straightforward. Thank you for that, guys. And that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Would you be so kind to um, send a link to your um, sure. re repositories? This would be great according to the responses from the chat. Some some of them I didn't, are... I didn't, I didn't, sorry, I didn't follow the chat. Sorry for that. Uh, of course, here's the link. That's the repository on GitHub. And you can also have Zenodo. Uh, there is an UI, of course, there. Uh, this one. Uh, you can have this one. It's also okay. And uh, if you want to get directly to Zenodo, you can have this one. If you want to have more information on our uh, Fair Data Austria, you also can have the link of our project. And uh, also, if you are more interested in it, no, I don't send you the, the link of the homepage. That's not interesting for us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I, I think there are several several points. What what I didn't get running is, for example, if you see here on, on the on the uh, the homepage, there is the button read less or read more. 
this is something what I didn't figure out in, in, in but I, I'm pretty sure that you have some, some features like that. Uh, but I didn't figure out that in, in, in time. And what I also didn't figure out is this uh, nice feature of uh, having a, 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 a window where we can uh, uh, push a button, then you get all the text because the transcript is not really interesting. So I, I put it in as, as with, without any of this feature. I, I found something like that in the script, but, but I, I can't get it run in my, in my version. So there's some deadline and you have to fulfill it. And that's what, what I did. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, that's basically uh, possible um, since yeah. you can add just like plain HTML, there's also the possibility, I don't know, summary uh, and the other html tag i always forget it so uh, later i can send you the link so it's basically yeah. uh, it's uh, yeah you can do this yeah quite easily actually also in your script i think during the, during, during the, the development of this uh, i had some emails to you andre and and we exchanged some some questions and you helped me uh, i think three or four times uh, yeah. solving some problems I actually, when time is over, then you have some, have to do something and, and finish something, and that's what I did, and, and I skipped all the nice features. Yeah. But anyway, it's it's on GitHub, and if anyone is interested, feel free yeah, to sure. and whatever. We push, uh, Joy actually uh, added this uh, details. It's a details tag, and there you add a summary tag, and this uh, will do the opening yeah. and closing. Actually, yeah, there's a workflow also. Uh, just, just for my personal interest, uh, if you compare the time uh, that you and your colleagues created these online courses for the website, probably with those uh, large amount of click events that you have to run and compare to the Lear script side, because, okay, by the first yeah. one, you're also creating the content, then afterwards you're just copying, but uh, uh, yeah, how much do you think it's uh, shorter to use Lear script uh, compared to the other? Uh, I think it's it's really really more more straightforward with Lear script to, to get it uh, get the information in there. Actually, yes, you have you have not that that possibilities to get it like like uh, very very nice or something like that. But that, that's not my my intention. I want to transport the, the content in an easy way, and 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 I I personally am much much faster using a text editor than uh, running around with the mouse in some, I don't know how they, they call this uh, things here in, 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 a, in, a, in, in, in this way. And I think you are, you, you are definitely fast with, with text oriented uh, uh, things and Lear script is really, really easy. So if you stick to the basics and you don't want to have some really uh, uh, fancy things, so just only to transport the information, to use some quizzes, to have some videos in the air and have some structure that's really, really fast. Mm. Thanks. Yeah. This was also our experience, actually, when we tried to incorporate it at the beginning with some uh, colleagues from didactics uh, who actually wanted to measure the progress of students. And so this mm. was the starting point, actually, to integrate those quizzes into Markdown that we use them. Yeah. And, and if, if I'm going to, to our uh, education on, on university, I have some courses there and they, they offer Moodle and it's, it's, it's really disgusting. So uh, I hate this platform really, really much. And it's really a pleasure to, to have some ideas in, in Lear script, export it and then import it in Moodle and that's all. And I don't have to, uh, work around with all these uh, Moodle things there, and that's really, really good. Okay, before we switch to a political discussion about the different um, learning management systems, of course, we oh, I'm have recorded. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's okay. We have the same, same feelings in different directions. Um, and we have to consider the progress in time. Um, if there are not other specific questions um, to our colleague Hermann, then we could switch to our friends from University of Kiel, Britta, Richard and Svanje, and ask for their contribution. Many thanks for your introduction of the FAIR project in Austria. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. 
Hello, everybody. You, you called us. Did, did I get it right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, Richard, if you want to, you can show yourself um, as well. Then I can introduce us. Swantia couldn't be here. She does have um, teaching. Um, she does have a course today, so she can't be with us. She has to be with her students, unfortunately. Um, but Richard and I will quickly um, show a bit of our work. Um, I will share my screen. You can see that. Uh, yeah, we would like to present um, our activities at Kiel University. Um, we are developing digital learning resources on research data management, but also on uh, digital literacy. Uh, my name is Britta Peterson, and next to me is Richard Diebe. We are both uh, members of the Central Research Data Management um, at Kiel University. And this re Central Research Data Management is uh, uh, does consist of two parts of the university. Um, I'm a member of the computer center and Richard is a member of the university library. Um, we have uh, two projects, one uh, which we do produce educational materials. Um, one is called e-learning building blocks for research data management. And the other one is called building blocks for digital teaching in the humanities. Um, both projects are funded by an internal program and while the project one, the e-learning building blocks for research data management is focusing a bit more on research data management topics and does have a more generic orientation, the other project um, does focus more on digital literacy topics uh, and does have a bit more subject specific orientation into the humanities. But in reality, we do use a uh, common um, technical foundation. We both use LiaScript, the same infrastructures. And uh, since the beginning, we uh, do exchange what we have and we have a joint development of materials and also of our course concepts. We also have very similar um, goals in both projects. So it's uh, in both cases an interdisciplinary and a collaborative um, development of materials. And um, both, in both cases, we wanted to produce materials which are expandable because we are a service, a central service station here. And uh, if, if we give our materials to lecturers, to teachers from subjects, specific subjects, um, usually they want to add or they all, there's always a lack of a subject specific example or something like that. So we wanted to have something that is expandable by uh, subject specific tasks or examples and so on. Um, and of course, um, we want to provide our material as uh, open educational resources. So once we started to, to work, um, I did think quite a lot about what kind of tools should I use to um, to start building my educational material. And luckily, I remembered that I uh, watched Andre and Sebastian in a hackathon somewhere. I was just for a short moment. I was there and I saw some guys doing some in interesting, very interesting stuff. And I remembered that I met them there. So I suggested to um, try to use Lia script because um, we, as a research data management um, team, we have uh, to always keep these principles in mind. Hermann um, already mentioned them, and they were also mentioned in the chat already. We want um, resources to be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And um, in that regard, I can't suggest an authoring tool like um, Lectura or Articulate uh, for which I have to buy licenses and my content is locked unless I don't have the license, for example. So LiaScript um, does have uh, some uh, aspects to be really cheerful about and Hermann already mentioned some of them. It's open source, so I don't need to buy a license. It's uh, possible to work co collaboratively. 
versioning is possible. Uh, Sebastian said it already. Um, it's very easy to access, very easy to reuse. Um, you can uh, include metadata. It's operable in that regard uh, that it's text-based, so I can use a very simple text editor if I want to, to edit things, but it's also exportable into the only standard we have uh, yet, the SCORM formats for the different kind of um, learning management systems. You also mentioned that we have the problem if we want to um, create educational material um, and we want to provide it to others uh, and to be usable for others, uh, we very fast have the problem that we all use different kind of learning management systems. So in Kiel, for example, in the city where I live in, we have uh, two institutions of higher education, this is the university I'm sitting in right now, and uh, the Fachhochschule Kiel. And so within the small city and these two institutions, we already have two different kind of learning management systems. We are using Open OLAT and they are using Moodle. To tell the truth, we have two different learning management systems in this only institution because our computer science uh, department just built up their own Moodle server. They always do what they want. So these are the reasons for us to, to choose LeaScript, and I'm also still very happy with it. Um, most points why also were mentioned by um, Hermann just now. So um, of course, we were asked to, to bring some selected activities that we had with uh, LeaScript, and I um, very quickly want to point out to uh, a seminar we were um, conducting. Um, I was conducting a, a seminar together with Svanche, who can't be here today. And uh, Svanche had uh, the idea to use LeaScript um, to, to let the students write their learning content themselves. So she has a special uh, task here. Um, her task is to, um, to provide uh, digital learning content for um, the history science. Um, she is a member of the history uh, seminar here in Kiel, and I supported uh, her in conducting this seminar. So this was a project seminar in the master's program for history students. Um, Svante and I conducted it, and the aims of uh, this course was to teach digital skills to the students. Um, to promote a research-based learning um, program. And we wanted the students to acquire job-related skills. Uh, students uh, sitting there um, yeah, were going to, to work in school. Um, they tend to go to work in libraries, research institutions, and so on. Um, <clears throat> there's a typo. It was conducted in, um, in winter semester 2022 and 23. And the required performance uh, by the students was not like, it's very common in uh, history science, they have to hand out a homework at the end of um, the semester. In our case, it was they had to hand out, or to send us or to, to create a Lear script um, module in our Git repository that we provided for them. Um, just very, very short, and I won't go into detail how we um, structured the course. So we had some theoretical input uh, in the first uh, um, in the first uh, class hours. <laughs> um, uh, Swan, especially Svante gave some input on uh, theoretical background on digital humanities and what uh, what falls into this area and what is required and so on. And then um, you, we moved to a technical uh, input, which was then my part. Uh, we used the Cloud Lab. Uh, we have a very new Cloud Lab established here. Uh, so everybody has the same um, environment uh, working in. I introduced VS Code, I introduced DiaScript, and we let the students choose a known uh, topic and let them work and let them create their own DiaScript. Module. Now we can have a very quick look into one module. Uh, do you see that? Because I, I switched the tab. Yeah. Okay. 
I just want to show it because I was very um, impressed how uh, much effort students put into this then. I mean, uh, we have to consider that these students were um, students of the humanities, so no computer science uh, students or something like that with a big, big, big background in um, computer work. And if we have a look at this uh, one designed by um, Jessica, I will just click quickly click through oops, a few things. She, um, for example, this is just an example, but she really nicely used a lot of um, possibilities and they um, also acquired a lot of uh, knowledge by themselves. So they were really active in finding out how, um, how to, for example, how to implement these um, uh, animation steps and how to design there or how to to have uh, stuff like this or how to have color there. She also used other colors and uh, like here and she really thought about some um, some nice designs. She included um, downloadable stuff and uh, for example here like so. Well, and she also, um, so you can see she also tried to like give it an, an own um, outlook, uh, it's her own color and she um, used hints here for her questions. Um, she sends people out to have some research, but then also it has different kind of um, tasks included. So I was very happy to see what was coming out um, of the students work. Um, so I can uh, say that uh, it's a very good possibility also to use uh, LiaScript as a didactical tool to let them write their um, content themselves. Here I would hand over to um, Richard. And Richard, do, should I share, go on sharing or do you want to share yourself? <coughs> it's easier if you share yourself. Eh? Yes, I'll try to take over now. Yeah, maybe until um, Richard is ready um, to... Sorry. Wait a second, I'll just, ah, oh, sorry, I will get it. Um, make, make, make. Oh. Can you use We're using LiaScript for the students um, as a tool to, to make them write um, LiaScript. did not only um, introduce Markdown uh, and LiaScript to them, but also made it necessary, or I also introduced how to use Git. Um, so we have uh, several um, digital tools and also um, uh, collaborative work possibilities um, to try out within a seminar. And that was really uh, successful and very nice with the students. And what was your solution for the mentioned problem of privacy? How did you organize the idea? Yeah, we have an institutional GitLab, which we use for the creation. So everybody is just locked in our um, so I moved this uh, now to a GitHub account to, to show you, and then I can share it also. Uh, but this is, at the moment, it's a workaround. So we are at the moment thinking about um, building up an own asset server and an own LiaScript server here at the university as a service. But then I need to uh, talk to my colleagues from the computer uh, center. We need a, uh, an amount of users to implement the service. Uh, so my boss will say, yeah, if, as soon as we have an, a certain amount of, of users, we can do it uh, to really like have it as a service in the catalog. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. Of course, we have it already um, for internal use. It's not so difficult to build it up, but it's more difficult to have it as a formal um, service mm -hmm. because, you know, then you have to provide it uh, for long term and so on. It's not only. Yeah, we have built it up and now it's open to everyone. 
uh, would be as a more motivating. We can't do it. Of course, like the colleagues from the computer um, science, from the informatics, from the computer science, who say, well, the computer center takes too long to build up these things, we do it on our own. So for, that's, for example, why they have an own Moodle server. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's not so good because, uh, you know, um, we from research data management tend to ask people to, to use the institutional services as far as possible. Because there are other uh, identification things and so central authentication questions and stuff like that. So, okay. Uh, of course, it's easy to build something up, but then it's not that easy to uh, like implement it with everything else that's there. So our course, we have done uh, some courses. What I wanted to show is, is this particular one. And um, it's a, just a normal um, presentation. We work in humanity, so this course is um, uh, an introduction into uh, the digital scholarly, scholarly edition, uh, uh, specifically with old high German. This is German, uh, the language German from 800 years ago. And what I really like, this is a normal course. Uh, everybody uh, gets their, their content. What I really like is that you can integrate a website into this course. So you don't have to do these presentations where you take a screenshot every now and then and show this part and this part. And uh, you can only show what uh, you photographed before. And so you can integrate your whole um, website and say, OK, I have this edition and I can uh, change something here. Uh, for instance, um, change this, then the website loads uh, again and uh, the changes are um, also seen and you can explain them to your students without going out of your presentation. Uh, you are still in it and uh, you are presenting a website uh, and integrating it. Uh, this is one aspect I really, really like uh, about Leascript. Um, and what we have also done is uh, we've done uh, quizzes which are available in uh, Leascript and we integrated them into our um, uh, e-learning system. Um, oh, I have to go back and be not an owner, I have to be a participant. And if I start it, I get a quiz. Uh, you have seen this before, so this is a normal Leascript quiz. And I can um, fill it out and um, do whatever is um, I have to do. In this case, I have two uh, good answers and maybe um, a second or third one. And if I go out, um, these um, results are um, um, inside my e-learning um, platform. And I get a result. In this case, I only done uh, three out of ten um, um, outcome, uh, and uh, I have not passed this course. But uh, our students can. And if I uh, go back to being an owner, I even got uh, an oversight uh, of how many uh, of my participants have done this course and um, have they passed, have they not passed and um, it's a really cool way of uh, integrating this and um, and still going into our uh, platform that we um, every student has access to and uh, still using Leascript and open um, resources yeah this <laughs> this is uh, the uh, conclusion of our bit and i hope uh, joy has now um, uh, better luck with her mac um, if there are any questions, um, please feel free to ask. Thank you, everybody. Can you explain shortly the technical background just for understanding how your solution was integrated into your learning management system? Well, this is something you provide um, while providing a SCORM uh, exports. Because the SCORM uh, 
format is meant to be interoperable and readable by different um, learning management systems. But Andre had to mm. do it a little bit. Maybe Andre can. Yeah, uh, there, there are some fixes because it actually Scrum is a standard, but it's implemented uh, or supported by different platforms differently. So uh, then we have to yeah, to make some kind of adjustments probably to, to make it uh, let it run on this platform on this. In most cases, it works. And the state of those quizzes are then stored permanently. Uh, it's not within the browser, but within the uh, database of the learning management system so that uh, yeah, that what people uh, or teachers uh, often want to have, uh, it's probably to have in, to be in control uh, to solve, uh, to see who solved which quiz and uh, at what time probably. The only difficulty at the moment, and this is, yeah, we have to improve this, is that the exporter is a command line tool developed in Node.js, so you the first have you uh, to install Node.js, then you have to install the exporter, and then you have to use the command line to export this into SCORM or to another format. This is something that could be improved by an additional tool or something like this. Joy is from, I think it's in the early morning in Philadelphia. Uh, it is, it's 8 a.m. And uh, actually, yeah, uh, Joy and the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia uh, Research Institute, actually they create far more educational content than we do actually which surprised us and from time to time they send also bug reports with something they actually plan to or intend to do or are already doing uh, which yeah I mentioned this quite often actually we were uh, we didn't thought that this was possible actually what they created uh, or added into their courses so it was, yeah we didn't expect this because the idea is just you have this text-based approach where everything everyone can build his own extensions and I think Joy and her colleagues uh, use this quite a lot. So, <laughs> and you have a new tool, right, for searching the or organizing your educational content. I'll just I can I can simply just give an overview. I think a lot of people sure. on this call um, already know the basics of Leah Script, so I can just share a little bit about our use case. So, our use case is very similar to other folks that have talked today, which is. We are providing um, education for researchers. So it's really important uh, for us to provide data science, data analytics, research data management uh, resources uh, to, uh, to researchers. If there's anyone on my team who is still on the call, if you are able to drop the link to our resources, that would be great. Um, in the meantime, uh, one of the things that uh, we haven't uh, seen yet today is our use of mermaid charts um, and so I will drop a link uh, again I can't show it but you guys can all click on it uh, and see an example of what a mermaid chart looks like um, in a Leah script document uh, because we have found that one of the challenges in education is that we sometimes want to provide diagrams um, and diagrams are very costly to create and costly to update. Um, so we use Leah script charts um, and because they're able to be updated um, just using text, it can be very uh, convenient for us to use mermaid charts and just type out what our diagram looks like. Um, so if you were to click on that other link that I just shared in chat, you would be able to see um, a little bit uh, and Elizabeth if you don't mind actually uh, adding the link to the front page of the website with the all modules instead of the link to the repository that would be fantastic great all right so that's an example of using uh, mermaid charts in Leah script so if you like us um, enjoy using diagrams but you find them really uh, hard to update um, we found that mermaid charts are really helpful so some of the tools that we've used in Leah script, uh, folks have already talked about. So we use the accordion. Um, we use feedback by having folks fill out um, a different uh, a survey in a different system. And then we use GitHub issues to track um, our um, issues that we want to resolve. So 
Um, if you just also click on Elizabeth's last link, the list of modules, this can give you a little bit of an idea of some of the materials that we cover. So we cover um, R, Python, um, research data management, um, Git, GitHub, how to um, use the command line. And for us, um, we really chose LeaScript because LeaScript is not only convenient, uh, but it also shares our values. So some of the values that we really brought to this project were the desire to have free open source software be what researchers use, because we think that research is better when data is fair. We've, always, we've already heard about fair today. Um, and we think that research is better when it's reproducible. So folks are using things like Python and R and not point and click solutions like SAS or SPSS. And this for us is also a justice issue. Um, I also work in global health. And one of the issues, uh, I think one of the, the big data di or digital divides that we have now is between um, uh, folks who generate data and people who analyze the data about people from the global south, at least in global health, this is a real issue for us that we want to put tools for research and data analysis in the hands of people who cannot afford licenses to SAS or SPSS. So uh, our values really include um, a lot of uh, free open source software, um, and getting folks the education they need without logins, um, without licenses, anonymous wherever possible. Um, and so all of these modules are intended to be one hour or less in time. Um, and uh, there's a map, uh, it's in Andre's email, but there is a map that shows like where we have uh, shared uh, uh, uh -huh. our resources and we've got uh, around 500 different users from all over the world in different areas that we're really excited about. So um, that's it. I'm sorry that I was not able to get things together um, on my Mac in time. Um, but next time we have this, if there's like a s how to set up your computer uh, to use Big Blue Button, that would be a useful like prep, I think. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. Uh... And this is what we also discovered uh, on your, your, you would also already tried the next step, right? I mean, it's just like interconnecting those courses and make them uh, searchable. I just started this uh, Docker container, uh, just like uh, on my uh, machine. It's just like what we found out, yeah, probably that you already tried to make your educational content searchable, isn't it? Exactly. And actually, that prototype that you just started off in a Docker container is actually live now. So this is very much um, a, a work in progress um, that Elizabeth has done a lot of work on. So I know that she would be grateful um, if folks would take a look at this uh, prototype that she's going to drop into chat and um, give us some feedback. Uh, because this is a way for folks to see how our materials are interrelated. There it is, learn.arcus.shop.edu. Um, and that way uh, you can sort of navigate and see what kind of materials we have. I'm very excited to see the participants' uh, materials uh, who have already spoken. Um, I'm very excited the, the, uh, the other teams that have spoken about research data management lifecycle uh, and tools around that, because that is something we're very passionate about. And I think um, this is a LeaScript conference, but it's also a little bit of a summit of leaders in open science. So that's very exciting for us. Thank you. It's just like, uh, yeah, this is actually very impressive what you've created uh, during the last years, actually, and also. Uh, May I ask you, how big is your team or the number? Uh, we've seen this probably, but the number of the contributors and uh, how much of a day do you spend on creating educational content? Oof. So so um, it's me uh, and four other data educators. So we're five people all together um, and we have recruited other subject matter experts from other parts of our institution and said, hey, will you partner with us and help us write a module? Um, 
And of course, this can be challenging because we have very high standards for um, what we expect our uh, modules to, to look like. We have a quality control sort of checklist that we ask people to abide by. Um, so having folks um, write their own modules often requires us to work with them very, very closely. Um, this is the largest uh, portion of our workday is creating these materials. But the nice thing is, is that we can write them once and use them in multiple different situations. So people can certainly take these asynchronously. Uh, we use a lot of JavaScript plugins so that people can run SQL for example, in the browser in LeaScript and practice their SQL skills or practice their Python skills. Um, but we also use these materials uh, to give synchronous uh, workshops. Um, and because we've licensed these very permissively, um, our colleagues in Botswana have also used them to offer some data science workshops there. So we spend a lot of time honing these materials, but uh, again, they get multiple use for multiple different audiences, which uh, for us is, is really the goal. Um, and if there's any of our materials that you like, that you want to borrow, uh, translate, use, or contextualize to your environment, um, please, by all means, take them. They are permissively licensed and we want people to use them. Thank you very much. It's just like still very impressive. Yeah. So because of the time, I guess we switch over to Anesha, if this is OK or there. So Anesha impressed us just at the beginning of this year, I guess, with because when ChatGPT and AI came into play, we just thought, I thought just, like, oh, OK, everything is solved. The artificial intelligence will do anything, and everything will become obsolete, especially in education. But then she. Uh, wrote an article on how to train ChatGPT to create LeaScript courses. And we were just like, oh, that's impressive. This uh, was an idea we didn't thought of. So to use uh, LeaScript as some kind of assembly or programming language for yeah, educational content. So hello, Anisha. Hi. Thanks for having me. Um, so I must say, this, um, all the presentations have been really, really impressive. Um, just really loved seeing all the data science and research data management uh, courses being created with LeaScript. Um, so I guess my presentation uh, and what I've done is a little bit different. So um, at the moment, I am a, a senior lecturer at the University of Queensland. Uh, I've only really transitioned into this role. So prior to that, I didn't really have much opportunity to actually write courses myself. Um, and I, I was a learning analytics manager uh, and I've worked a lot with educational technology. Um, but one of the things that, um, so I should say I worked for an area that did make a lot of courses and made a lot of blended courses at the University of Queensland. Um, and so I've seen sort of authoring environments uh, and particularly SCORM and some of those authoring tools were not doing a lot, but they were very, very expensive. So um, when I first came across LiaScript, I was really quite impressed with it, uh, but I didn't directly have a course to go into it. And then, of course, um, I think it's just about a year now that ChatGPT got released. Um, and <coughs> last year, um, I think around about this time, I started playing with ChatGPT, just looking at its capabilities, and then I had a bit of a Christmas break. Um, and one of the things I did was, um, this is a blog post that I wrote, which was act as a learning designer, um, getting ChatGPT to generate an online module. Um, so it was a lot of prompting and um, then I was like, okay, now I've got the content for a course, but how do I display it? How do I display quiz questions? Um, and I, th I immediately th thought about LiaScript. So what I actually did was, uh, and it's documented in this particular blog, is actually teach ChatGPT to do the LiaScript markdown. Um, and obviously that's a lot of just normal markdown, except for some of the quiz questions. 
um, and uh, whatever ChatGPT gave me back for the content I was trying to generate. I think this was a grammar course I was trying to generate. Um, I copied and pasted it into a markdown file um, and it ran and became a, a course. Um, so that, I think that was pretty okay. Um, from about April this year, uh, there's a whole notion of auto GPTs, which was, you know, trying to get um, to programmatically start prompting um, chat GPT to create all sorts of things. Um, and about that time, I had the idea of, you know, yes, I could make a course, um, or at least starting content for a course, I think, uh, would be good, um, as well as generate quiz questions and project ideas. Do I want to be copying and pasting? if we've got this new sort of form of intelligence here. So I came up with this idea for a tool called Eduweaver. It doesn't really have a user interface at the moment. It just runs as a Jupyter notebook. Um, and you will need a ChatGPT API key. Um, but it essentially just gets you to answer a few questions. So, you know, what is your topic? What's your teaching strategy? How many topics or how many subtopics do you want? Um, what should you really be including uh, in there? And then who's the audience? Um, and you can do some custom settings for, for certain things, like in a number of questions um, and setting basically what that output markdown file is. So you go through um, and then run all these cells. Um, this uses a tool called Langchain behind the scenes, which is good for creating programmatic prompts. Uh, and tools around large language models. Um, this was built in April. Uh, there's a lot, it's like I think almost the whole world has changed with those with that sort of extra tooling that's available. Um, so this isn't really parallelized, so it probably takes a, a few minutes to actually go off and generate the course. And um, to just show you quickly, uh, I know we're running out of time a little bit, but um, to show you really briefly what the prompts actually look like behind the scenes. So once we've got that information about what the topic is, um, any sort of subtopics that you want included, um, it's really just a matter of writing this as text and saying, you know, give it a persona that you're a subject matter expert and you've got a le learning designer skills. This is the topic that you need to write content on. Um, but also because I want to programmatically work with what you give me back, or what ChatGPT gives me back, um, I force it into giving back JSON, essentially, which it does pretty well um, without a lot of coercing. Um, so that's generating, you know, the, the high-level table of contents for your course. You can almost look at that as brainstorming what needs to go into your course. Um, once I have that back, it's just a matter of calling ChatGPT again for each one of those topics that it's come up with and asking it to actually write the content. Then I can also get it to write quizzes. Um, I don't initially use the live script format for quizzes. I actually get that back in JSON. And then I have another process uh, where I can actually ensure that it gets into the right markdown, uh, particularly. Um, and that's basically it. It's just a matter of being able to run all these different prompts um, collectively, collate it all together. And that's what the code in the um, in the Google Collab notebook actually does. So this is uh, just the repository for Eduweaver, and you can see I've generated a number of sample courses there. I think that's why I come out as having 10 courses in um, your analytics, uh, Sebastian. Um, there's a bit of pros and cons of ChatGPT, um, a meteorology course, learning analytics. I've just tried a few diverse particular things. It's not always perfect, um, but it does give a good starting point for a particular course. Where would I like to head with it? Um, I really love the online collaborative e editor um, for LiaScript. Um, and I've really been thinking about semantic editing or a user interface for semantic editing. And usually we think about um, making text bold or, or highlighting or you know putting in a quiz question um, and writing the markdown for that. But if you take that to a higher level with um, 
putting prompts behind UI elements, it might be where it's um, highlighting text in your course to reword or create a simplified version of it. Um, adding a new topic and then having it generate uh, learning content for that particular topic. Um, getting a persona to actually review the content on a page and check if it's appropriate for a particular audience, as well as adding quiz questions of different levels. So you can see how what previously we'd have as a toolbar that might be making things bold, we can now attach actual actions to. Um, and I'd love to go down the path of actually getting ChatGPT to design interactives. So if you're an educator and you need a particular um, calculator or an interactive where someone needs to drag something to see something else change, um, it might be that you just prompt and we can actually build it and insert the code behind the scenes. Um, so, so basically that's um, what I've been up to. Uh, I should say I, I worked on this around about April, May, um, and then I swapped to a new role as a lecturer and I just haven't had time, but hopefully over this Christmas period, I'll be able to do some more work. So that's basically it for me. Thank you very much. Very impressive. Do, do you already have any, uh, how's it called, uh, or did you try out already to uh, give ChatGPT some basic structure or some course content and then ask it just to reformat it to, uh, for an, another person, for another audience or something like this? So did you try something like this? Did it work? I just. Yeah, so you see a lot of the explain like I'm five examples. Um, I I guess the one thing I have done is uh, with the release of custom GPTs that came out. So if you've got a ChatGPT Pro account, you can make your own custom GPT. Um, I've got one that can make maths worksheets with full solutions uh, for teachers and actually uses like Python programming to do the calculations to make sure they're correct. Uh, but in testing of that, you can basically say, you know, do it for area for a year 10 class. Um, so it does have a notion of different levels. It might not be perfect, but it definitely it knows how to, if you define an, a particular audience, um, you can get content simplified for that audience. Because, but it also can rate uh, uh, content, right? I think this is something Sebastian was all ways seeking into that you have something that like a linter that gives you feedback onto this is too hard this is not uh, the correct topic you have to restyle this probably you start not with the quizzes but uh, restructure your content do you think something like this would be possible with chat gpt or something like this so I start with a draft yeah. and then improve to... yeah so i i've been playing a little bit around personas and so what you'd really want is to have a a persona that was like, you know, an educational learning designer reviewer of your content. Um, so that could, they could look at it from the pedagogical point of view. You could then have um, someone that's um, actually got the characteristics of a learner at a certain skill level reading the content. Um, of course, you know, I think you can go pretty far down this path, but it's, you know, I, I really see the value of having humans collaborating and using these AIs. So, you know, you probably want to get real people in the mix as well. Thank you. Some more questions, probably? Someone else? Has a question? I guess you will announce your activities after implementing to the community via blog or similar uh, communication. Blog, blog and, and and Twitter or X, I, I think I, I always like to post on there. Yeah, it would be cool. Very impressive. Thank you. Yeah, um, of course, you know, um, LiaScript made it really easy because it was just really simple prompts, but there's a lot of functionality baked into LiaScript that actually just, if you give it the markdown, it becomes a full course. Okay, thank you very much. Because we are way ahead of time, uh, I think I will just, uh, Go on to the next step so probably i'll try to present the, the new stuff that we have implemented okay thank you thank you very much i'll just take the
can you see my screen? I hope so. Right? Yes. Perfect. I, where is it? Uh, damn it. Playground. This one, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. So, uh, probably I start with the state of Leah script. So, uh, I'll remove this. So, uh, I made some assumptions, and before, probably just I will go to step by step. So, one idea that we had that we are probably we have been mistaken uh, in viewing open educational resource as a one way street. So, where you only create content, uh, you give it out to the user, and they are like the consumers of this. So we actually, what we want to do is to, uh, yeah, allow more collaboration between authors, allow more collaboration, collaboration between uh, teachers and students, and also by students. So and I'll uh, share this. So this will be a live demo, probably with you. So you have this, we've made some new stuff uh, within the live editor. So it's also just a website hosted somewhere. It's just a plain HTML, yeah. Just a web server hosting some website. And what I did now is just I copied this uh, content probably, and this is just one way how you can probably share your content, your code, or make some examples uh, with other if you create or go to the uh, external uh, menu, external resources put into your link, probably, you create a new link. And if you open this, I'll share this with you. Also, you get the, uh, you all have the same now editor, just, uh, just it takes this content and tries to display this. And if you want to make this your personal uh, version to store this as the basis for the next step, you simply have to uh, fork this. So this is just one way of fork. We've created a new, the URL has changed, and this is now a copy of the content, uh, and I can probably uh, change the content and share this also afterwards with others or download this. So supporting authors, I'll switch to this. Uh, sharing courses, we made some adaptions because GitHub might be too complex, uh, and then I will go to a, a thing that during the analysis uh, of our well, the analyst Sebastian made, we probably found out uh, that scripts are not, not that often uh, used, but they can actually be used to yeah, implement anything, anything you want to. And then we made some yeah, new classroom extensions. This is something that we actually, you can say, discovered. So if you click onto this or see this editor, uh, you probably see that we are just like now these. Uh, we went away from the text based. You can still uh, do some editing. So this change control S is the symbol like we're uh, reloading, but you can also do, I want to have this text bold in this case. So you can now use most of these uh, elements also. If this is difficult, uh, just for a starting, for a person starting to create content. So this might be an easy way to deal, to play around with this, uh, One, two, three. To play around with the basic uh, features that there are probably uh, in Leah's script to make editing quite easy. Uh, so and there's another one. So I already sh showed this. So I can now, there's the snapshot URL where you can uh, refer to an external resource. Ah, sorry, to an external resource. You can create a snapshot URL where the entire content of this course, or if I create a new one, whatever did I just uh, test bar. Uh, so this is just an idea if you want to uh, share some short snippet of the code or 
if you share a problem with us probably so there's a bug or this is not working you can always uh, share this as a snapshot url and then the entire content well this is short is actually stored within the url and to whom you send this or uh, whatever so it will actually load or reconstruct the content of this course from this uh, url basically so and you can do the same uh, as we call this snippets or learning snippets I'm ahead of you just want to have a structure probably for some course content uh, and I'll shrink this a bit so then it's also possible I will highlight this in detail afterwards uh, to share this course to Lia script uh, within the data array. But then it depends uh, if it's just a short document or some short quizzes that you actually want to share. You can yeah, create this kind of URL, send this via uh, any kind of email or via WhatsApp or another chat uh, application. And what we will do, we'll actually instruct the script to load this course content now from this URL where it's encoded actually. So it shouldn't be that long. That's probably neat or simple way to just share some ideas, slides, notes, or structures for the following uh, courses. And you can do also quizzes in this case where you don't want to have the effort to store this somewhere, upload this uh, into a GitHub or something like this. Just a neat way to share some uh, small pieces. So, so that's it and there are some also some improvements for the editing stuff if you want to have something of you working with some tables no this is not the quiz the table you can now probably just reorder those tables just by hit tap Uh, again, hit tap or something, and the table is reformatted in this case. So you have an easy way, convenient way. Uh, tap tap. Uh, on the next slide. Uh, to work also with these data structures. So it will probably, yeah, nicely rendered. And if you even want to have some more uh, support, probably by uh, the system, we added some math.js uh, support, like 10 kilometers to miles. We can basically do also some calculation, which is uh, evaluate expression, and you get the number of miles probably, or if you have some kind of formulas that might be complex at 12 over or fraction by 12 multiplied by a something like this we can also turn this into a more fancy way we can turn this into a uh, latex representation so simply enclose this uh, with the dollar sign as you know and this is just a way uh, and this is a nice latex formula encoded so just as yeah, went away from the purely text-based uh, approach to give more control or more like support to the creator of the content within this web-based uh, yeah uh, uh, editor. And what's now also possible, and we had some uh, problems in here, so now you can see that uh, this is offline probably. So I can switch to I want to work collaborate with other authors probably so i can switch to webrtc and then this does not work uh, you can also switch to websocket but webrtc is the first place to be or to stay so you see the url has changed and i can now also share this url wait a second just so that you can see this Uh. Mm. 
but it does not. Okay, I wanted to share video from another camera, but I can show it then to you via this tablet. So what I do now is probably just take a screenshot of this URL that's probably encoded in there. So I'm just like, oops, it's a photo application. I create a screenshot and it's moving me to the editor website. Their states get synced. So you see the same content or Perhaps we have been mistaken. And I'm going to the state now. Up in here, there's this other user. So you see that it has changed. And what we finally also accomplished is, is that possible to uh, upload images, uh, audio, and also videos that are stored uh, within your browser personally, and they are also synced. So if I click here, probably on my tablet, on to upload the video, it asks me, and this is quite neat, so I found this out playing with my daughter, so it starts the camera in this case, and I can make some recordings. So I'm gonna send this to you. So in Germany, it's snowing. Skip this. I made a recording. And it'll take some time, probably. In this case, it has uploaded the video content. And if everything works well, uh, also the video appears in here. So, so, in this case, so you store this or recompile this, and you can see. Okay, Firefox has some problems. So it's actually the recording of the Jeremy, video. Snowing. Yeah, this was my voice. Actually, yeah, but this is just a basic idea. So you have a fully fledged uh, online editor that you can work, uh, which you can use also offline to create educational content. You can cooperate with other authors. So this one just, uh, removed and uh, work offline or in collaborative mode. So I can make some notes, share this with another author of my content, and then afterwards we sim simply reunite and our states are synced. And if you want to afterwards to load this content somewhere else or to download it, you can either try the readme file or you download the entire project. Also everything browser-based uh, as a zip file. And it did not work. So I'll have to fix this. Uh, but I'll do this later. Ah, it's a shame. So we actually, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry for this, but it actually uh, was working. Uh, probably have to recompile this. So the next time you load this, this should be working. Sorry for that. So the one thing I already uh, said, so we just, uh, here's an example of running uh, collaboration with multiple browsers. You can see this uh, in a better way. And the other one thing we tried to fix is basically, as I show you already, is that GitHub might be challenging for technical users. And probably there are other ways to distribute a educational content uh, quite easily. Yes, the video is stored in the browser. And how can it, how can this be done? I showed this to you already via the uh, data URI, which actually creates some long URL, which might be too long. But you can also do here's just an example of another URL. That's running state of layer script, uh, some just the introduction, and 
where is it? What's possible is that after this data ori, it can be also added into this QR code. So you're totally offline, and so and you have installed probably your Lear script, uh, Lear script on your smartphone, and you can simply load the content of these simple snippets, uh, educational snippets probably of this content, simply by uh, clicking or loading this, photographing this QR code and uh, loading this website. So. Then there's a video I made, uh, so I will not demo this now, probably not for the time, but we can also do is you can, if you have some restrictions probably to the educational content, some um, probably it's not allowed to share educational content in some certain areas, you can always use the Tor network and use this Onion Share. It's a free tool and it's basically if you upload or if you load your content or your folder into this tool, uh, you get an Onion URL with an Onion browser. You can add this URL, also like it's done here, like a question mark, the Onion URL, and to uh, let the yeah, script load the educational content from wherever they from wherever it is just by using the Tor browser or the Tor network. So here just some demos uh, on this. IPFS is also something that we have been working on, and you can uh, I think so. Be, one thing was just we need to go more peer to peer, also in uh, connecting users and uh, also in sharing, uh, creating educational content. And so IPFS is something like a distributed Dropbox you can think of. And if I just, uh, you can install this like, an, like a Dropbox on your uh, machine. And what you can do then afterwards, just like upload new folders or files. We are playground, we are user symposium. So now this Lear script symposium is probably uploaded uh, into the IPFS network or probably, yeah. And what you can do afterwards, just like uh, create an IPNS name space if you want to uh, publish this. And there are different browsers, uh, like the Brave browser or Opera, who actually allow you to load these uh, types. Show this locally. Uh, so IPNS, some uh, unique key and something like this, and you can access also this educational content and uh, use this as a link to refer to this uh, uh, educational content, but you don't have to upload this somewhere. You don't have to store it in some kind of web space. You simply upload this into the IPFS network, network via your local uh, client uh, in this case. And then it's, yeah, for me, I can see it now. Uh, to see this in the entire network, uh, it takes probably some minutes to see this. So but this is probably also that we added to use these uh, IPFS addresses. And this is something that we want to add in the future. It's probably also this torrent network. And I encourage you, uh, everyone, to try this out, this web torrent network or this uh, instant IO, which is basically also it's simply a distributed peer-to-peer -peer system, uh, like to, on the torrent network, but this time only the browser. Whenever you upload some kind of files or folders in here, uh, you get a magnet, magnet URI. I'll simply go back uh, to this. So here's an example. So this can be used also as an URL to identify or to see this. You see this, uh, the content of the course, your images and your markdown document, and use this as a unique identifier and this is as the URL, and others can visit uh, your course and also then share this if someone else uh, um, uses this uh, same staff location. So 
uh, this time I wanted to add something uh, new because scripting, I just give a short tutorial if we still have work uh, time now because uh, we firstly we added some of this opportunity to add scripts uh, to make our code snippets executable but then we found out that's just like a neat thing if you also have scripts that are execute some code and simply add some results uh, to your document dynamically because why is that might dynamic content be necessary because by the time we are writing uh, our educational content probably it's already outdated so if you're using some uh, uh, real-time measurements uh, from the planet or use some uh, from from uh, like the COVID data sets which changed every time so you whenever you create educational content so you only work with static content and with old data and scripts give you the opportunity to uh, to improve this to load additional content uh, to update your course actually but it's not directly the execution of scripts uh, it works a bit different in Lea script and this is probably something you need to know so if you have your markdown document and there's somewhere just a script JavaScript doing some calculation so the first thing it needs to be parsed it's not directly executed and Lea script afterwards because it's implemented in Helm uh, it uses ports to communicate securely with the JavaScript site so these strings uh, of scripts are actually then sent in order to the JavaScript site. They are evalu evaluated and the result is sent back. So and everything that is uh, that we exchange are actually just strings. So this is a string and a string might be also a result. So I'm going to give you a short demonstration. So like in this case, a script the result is either hello world or uh, 22 multiplied by 22. So it just gives you back this actual aesthetic content that does not does not change. So and if you I remove this at the moment, and scripts also can be added uh, to animation steps or effects if you have seen this. So uh, the system is not aware that there are some additional scripts that you can. As I mentioned, add them to animation steps. If we go to the next slide, nothing happens. Then on animation step one, the first script is executed. If I switch to the ne next one, because there is an alert in there, so the next one is executed with the result, which could be pretty annoying. Uh, so if I, all the time, if I want to calculate this only once, but every time this alert or this calculation is redone, so what you can do is basically is just like to run once set it to true because we are in our world it's not a real script uh, in this case run once equals to true and so it's now it's also executed hello world uh, so the calculation is done but whenever i go back now it simply stores the result of the last calculation or evaluation so this is just uh, one thing so it doesn't recalculate it again and where do we might need this and a uh, basic example um, probably it's like weather data from free from the free weather api which is an open service based on uh, openmaterial.com so where you can download or load the current weather historical weather data uh, if you want to, is it okay? It's not for me. So, and I actually will check now. Uh, want to show you just a simple example of how we can update this, uh, or how we can add this live data actually into our Leo script course. So, I'll remove this one at the moment. So, So you see that you can also next to the uh, run once there also that you have 
can style the resulting output because the style uh, the script if it has some output that it's print out if it's null it's not displayed so you can manipulate some stuff some uh, dom elements if you want to otherwise it has a result and it's printed out and this can be it's whether a part of this yeah of a string in this case of a stream or just like if you want to have it now just the entire block i recompile this and if i load this what you see is just like it run the script uh, it fetches the weather data, but this actually takes some time. So this is just JavaScript syntax, just, okay, parse the JSON part, and then uh, every script in Leah script uh, has a send Leah object, probably, where you can asynchronously send stuff back or strings if you want to. So and what it did now, it just like send the strings of the data back. But if I go back to... We also already have some kind of visualization if you want to. So, if we are compiler, this is a it, it's actually a markdown parser. Why can we not send also data that's either HTML or written also in Leah script uh, format? So, what I do now is probably I simply create a string uh, with a table. I want to have it plot as a line plot with some time and temperature values, and then afterwards I simply add those values in a simple for loop and send this back to Leah script as a, I have to mention this, Leah script colon, and then whatever markdown it is. So Leah script is now aware, so okay, the content that arrives is not the basic, it's not a string, it's actually some kind that I have to parse. And if you do the same now, you have this neat table with all these data sets, uh, and you can directly uh, visualize the content and whenever your user or your student uh, returns to the website so this is the weather forecast for the next seven days in Freiburg and this can be changed this can be some weather forecast for another uh, area or this can be any kind of dynamically data that is somewhere generated stored or accessed so and if I go back to so this is calculated once it doesn't have to fetch it again so and now this this thing so you can use scripts to communicate also with other scripts so uh try to show this in here so it's actually pretty basic so we always use this input macro to uh, replace this by the actual uh, what we do now here is just like we combine those scripts with different inputs uh, values something or input tags so this could be also a uh, slider like a range uh, slider so scripts are highlighted if I click onto this one this script the result is outputted like on a topic like on X and the default value is Y that's it so I can always click onto this if there's an input associated and then I can just simply run the slider and you can see this script here over there is using this input from X, so whenever this gets exported, uh, this script is recalculated. So you can do some nice, uh, pretty calculations, generate a script or even formulas. And if we extend this to this idea uh, for our weather forecasting uh, demo, so I simply did this. There's a longitude, there's a new script that outputs mm -hmm. on the idea of longitude. And the other one on latitude. And as you can see, it does actually the same. We simply added those additional inputs or simple replacements also in here. So it's basically the same, but we only change the latitude. The data is uh, grabbed actually from somewhere else. And we can see that I think longitude for the south, it's getting warmer. And uh, yeah, the more we get to the south, probably just yeah, so I hope you get the idea. So this is just an easy and fancy way to create, uh, to use scripts to create dynamic content. And if you want to, also you can simply uh, put all the things that we have done into this uh, macro syntax. Use this, add this to the head uh, in here. And so you can create some uh, 
reusable a library that where the features can be reused so that I want to have a weather uh, table at this location and there's another one in this location and their script inputs actually only talk to uh, each other so I can reuse this particular feature everywhere within the content so this just an idea on this how to use the script and as we use those peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, a lot and so the idea from our side was that peer-to-peer -peer could be a killer feature of uh, open educational resources and how if I Just copy in this one. To the live editor, I create a new note. Probably simple voting. And there are also two types of scripts or two scripts that are actually uh, run. But this is something when we create a classroom, uh, it's actually always those uh, state of quizzes have been synced, uh, the surveys have been synced, but now in our work at the, yeah, as a member of the Crosslabs project, uh, where we try to uh, make university hardware uh, labs also accessible by the internet, uh, we found out probably that uh, actually we created a new system uh, entirely and the ideas from the system I, why is it not possible actually to uh, do like pop sub also within the script uh, so that everyone can create their own kind of uh, extensions to the classroom so uh, this is just a simple JavaScript uh, JavaScript uh, functionality where you can yeah create a classroom uh, you get a message when you receive uh, when you receive you publish some any kind of topics and you subscribe to these topics and this is basically just a neat or handy way if I use this in here so there's probably I did a wave uh, function I can copy the same script I need some more functionalities but this time it does not wave it just um, use another kind of icon Probably the ones I want to do with this script. Oops. Very quick. Well, probably there's some kind of. Did I make a mistake? Okay. Hmm. So there's probably an HTML typo, but I tested this. So this does the same. Uh, so we had some CSS in this case. I simplified this uh, with some additional macros. So it can be used or reused uh, everywhere, basically. And if I share this, probably as a data, URI, I have created now, like uh, loaded this course from the URL. And you have the opportunity, the URL is quite big. You can create a classroom. Every Leo script document, if you open this, is probably also offers you the possibility or the opportunity to create a classroom. So the easiest way, so you can use different backends actually uh, to, to establish the communication between these browsers, like address that we use in Gandhi B, Jitsi, which change their API a slightly bit, pop up. Uh, as a more professional tool, uh, something like this, but I can, yeah, simply try, give gun a try, probably. i create a random uh, username, connect this. I'll show this to you. If I open up another browser, copy this URL to here. So the same configuration is actually encoded within the URL. Also the content, I can connect to it. You have this chat message also. Hello world. You received, you can do also within here. Ask your quizzes, do see your surveys. Test, come on. 
to submit. So you only see the data actually if you participate in. So do you know the test? Oh, yeah. There, which at the moment does not make sense. So the state are states are synced. And with this, so this is basically baked in into the layer script syntax. But what you can also do is just like I send now over to this hello wave, as you can see, those hearts. So this could be another extension or reaction within the classroom. So if they don't like your courses, they drop on the same side. I can probably, I'm curious to find out if this works also for you. So the URL is pretty long, and if the other one's connected, and everything, oh, there are already four persons in the classroom, so that's not me. Uh, sending actually seven ones. So yeah, that's the basic idea. If you use those scripts, combine them with macros, and add this as a plugin or probably as a library, uh, we can build now also custom classroom extensions and reuse them into, this could be a collaborative drawing, and we could really also share uh, labs that are attached to, or Arduino's consoles that are attached to one uh, application, uh, to one Arduino course, and share this content then directly, or the, the, the access to this via the browser. So, where is it? So, I will skip. Ah, hello? Question mark. So, there are some questions. So, in the next thing, uh, I think I'll skip this because it uh, breaks the time, but this was been our last effort uh, in creating an online course, or I'll just show it to you. So just uh, give it a demo, a try. So wait a second. Where is it? So because it works with the same basic principles. Where is it, where is it, where is it? So there's somewhere a, a computer running in Sebastian's lab. So I connect to this, if my bandwidth is enough. And there you have this uh, yeah, simple lab environment. Uh, you have this coding environment and you have this console. These are basically uh, what we've done now so far. And so this is one step and these labs and these labs configurations Wait a second. so actually uh, these all I can create new classrooms as I, if I, as I want to uh, add some kind of uh, combine this add some modules into this so what you've seen this everything has been a module and if you you create a unique URL this is also peer-to-peer -peer shared with your other colleagues and since I already created this real lab uh, in this case which uh, actually connects via peer-to-peer -to, -peer to this uh, hardware infrastructure that you have seen uh, from Sebastian, it does, they share, like like in the Lea script uh, classroom, uh, their current state. So I'm currently in the lobby. So this one is running as a station mode. I can access this station and it shares the control and commands with me. So I can see this updating stuff. Uh, I can control this. I can hello, cross lab address. Hello world, serial prints, so let's change this into a script. So Sebastian is moving his hand, so and I can simply now run compile this. This code is also said, like in the classroom feature, uh, to this remote area. You see uh, my changes have been passed, and you see there also this hello world. This has been our last effort, actually, to uh, have a, create a 
method for sharing also this university hardware in a peer-to-peer -peer manner, only browser-based. And this is something that we were not aware of, that this can be also integrated directly, not as a side project, but also directly into Leo script. And this is what we also want to add in the future. Okay, thank you, I'm out of time. No. Thank you very much to Andre. Um, and thanks to the participants uh, stay with us for this long time interval. Probably we have a short chance for further discussion, how we can establish this format or alternative approaches. Andrew, can you please show us the discussion board embedded in GitHub? This could be one possibility to strengthen our community's activities. If, for instance, someone has an interesting template implemented or a new course, this could be the right place for discussing it. Can you see this? Can you see this question? Everything is fine, yeah. This is the idea to have a stronger collaboration between us and probably other persons. Um, we invite you to use the discussion board at the LeaScript website for an announcement of new courses again or some the discussion of ideas, uh, further concepts or additional features embedded into the tools. And I, in this way, it would be a perfect um, uh, platform in parallel to upcoming symposiums like this. Um, probably we have to work in timing and scheduling, but uh, I guess after the reactions in the chat and from our presenters, um, I'm looking forward to rerun this format for next uh, step, for the next step of the script. Any comments, remarks, ideas, what we should implement in the upcoming weeks, months? Andrew, probably you can answer to the question from Dennis. Using code is only available for languages that have an AJS implementation? Uh, no, uh, actually we do. We have this code runner. Example, if there is a JavaScript implementation, it should work right out of the box. But uh, like Sebastian is giving uh, courses on C-sharp and some other programming languages, we have this code runner, which is a uh, self-hosted server and you simply send those uh, executable code snippets uh, to the server uh, it, it prints out the results I can, I can show it in here uh, so it's basically as I executed this piece of code so this is like uh, doing C code but you can also have this with a couple of programming languages and which should also work with R, generate some images, so which are stored if you want to. So, and this is basically something that you can use also or reuse in your courses at this. So the the correct uh, way the the code has been written, that is not uh, possible to store at the moment. Uh, it's just like uh, everyone is running these courses in the content privately uh, by his own. So it's not that uh, there's some kind of authority actually and, and execute this. But you always have the opportunity if I create a new classroom probably. Uh, or if you share your classroom uh, courses, then uh, also can uh, what you can see now, uh, you have this additional button, and so you can switch into collaborative mode. So, 
hier im Chat. Äh. Ja. Okay, in this case, I don't know why it's not working. Uh, probably I'm out of bandwidth, but actually you should be also uh, have the opportunity to have this in collaborative mode uh, running and to see these updates that someone else did. Oh, there is a bug. Yeah, but basically seeing it is not possible at the moment. Uh, there's, uh, if you have some wrong code, actually, probably you should switch to this, uh, we run this. Uh, so you get the error messages back, uh, depending on if it's C, probably you get a more uh, better user feedback. If I run this, uh, so with more uh, inputs, and there was another user who actually already tried to uh, combine this with script quizzes, if you mean this with uh, code examples, so that you'll probably, when you type in your code, uh, you can exchange this button also by a, um, a quiz button, and then if you run it, uh, it will run the code and also check the content, uh, if this is correct, and then you will have probably your code uh, example or your code quiz solved, uh, or you have to rerun it again in this case, so the, it's possible uh, to combine this with those script sending uh, in this case to, to, to uh, yeah combine the editor with the quizzes also with the generic quiz I'll have to look for the link wait a second should be on github Yes. Script. It's probably an older issue. Uh, probably it's also good enough. Probably this is a good starting point for the first um, entry in our new discussion board, and we are looking forward, uh, and we can also include it into an email you received. Uh, containing all the references on the materials. So, yeah, uh, Rose, I will send you the link uh, of the running example uh, where this can be combined, actually. Yeah. I cannot find it at this moment. Any other urgent questions? And I see 152 sec minutes on our clock. Yeah, of course. Feel free to open a discussion about it and we can extend um, this by a link to an example and probably we can uh, find new perspectives on the question of code 
meets um, quizzes. Okay, if there is no new urgent question, feel free to contact us in the discussion board via email or any other channel. We are looking forward to receive some interesting um, initiatives related to new schedules and so on. Of course, the schedule should be more tight next time, uh, but hopefully we transported some of the main ideas we have in mind if we talk about the next version of Lia script. Thank you for, <laughs> thank you very much for attending. We are looking forward to reorganize a new version of the symposium. I guess probably you will talk to your colleagues and we will find a new collection of interesting um, speakers again. And in this way, Enjoy the afternoon or whatever point of time is in your part of the world. It was a pleasure. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.